It's like a nice scarf. One that Jake Gyllenhaal will not be getting his hands on. I thought I was like crying on the book at first because there were droplets like falling on the page. And then I realized it was coming from my mouth. Just drooling all over the book. Over the next week, I'm gonna be reading some booktubers' favorite books from the year of 2021. I did a video, this video right here, where I read booktubers' worst books of 2021. I'll link that bad boy down below in the description. And I figured that it's only fair that I balance things out and read booktubers' favorite books of 2021. The only thing is, is that I feel less weird about loving a book that a booktuber hated than I do reading a book based off of a booktuber's recommendation and then hating that book. Like, I feel like that's just putting me in awkward territory. But I'm gonna risk it. Risky, risky. I picked out three of my favorite booktubers from the platform, which again, risky business. Risky, risky because there are so many booktubers I love, like too many booktubers that I love. I mean, there's not really any booktubers that I hate. Or are there? Oh, no tea here today. Nah, no tea will be spilled. First up, a word from our sponsor. Today's video is being sponsored by Book of the Month. I am obsessed with the Book of the Month service. It fills up my book lover tank every month. If you don't know what Book of the Month is, let me fill you in. It's a monthly bookish subscription service for readers like you and me. Each month, their team vets hundreds of books and curates a list of books for us to choose from. It's a great way to get ahead of the curve on books that are coming out each month. It gives you the chance to to read books that are new releases, and sometimes books that haven't even been released yet. We love getting our hands on early releases. Each month they also give you the opportunity to skip a month, in case you're a slow reader like me and can't keep up. You can skip a month without being charged. Something that is incredibly exciting about Book of the Month this month is that they are expanding their list from five books to seven books, so now we have seven books to choose from. You know what they say about the number seven. It's lucky! Who knows, you might luck out and find your new favorite book. They also have an add-on option, so if you can't find your self-control at checkout, you can always add another book to your order. You can add on a book or two or three. Let's take a peek at their selections for March. First up, we've got the Book of Cold Cases. This is a mystery thriller. Dating Dr. Dill. This is a self-help book. Psych. It's a romance book. Tell Me Everything. This is a non-fiction book. The Verifiers, a mystery thriller. The Unsinkable Greta James. This is an adult contemporary story. The Paris Apartment. This is a mystery thriller. And the book in the iconic blue box. <laughs> the Cartographers, a fantasy with a mystery twist. So many freaking good selections this month. There are three books in this list that I am super heckin' excited about. The Verifiers, because I've seen this book everywhere and I just feel like I need to read it. It's saying, hey, pick me up, read me. The Cartographers, because I'm not gonna lie, this cover is just calling out to me. It's just beautiful and I need to read it. And the unsinkable Greta James because I've read a book by this author before and I really liked it. Let me know in the comments down below which one you think I should read first. The thing that gives me hard eyes over Book of the Month is the fact that it's an affordable option to build up your collection. Books ain't cheap, but Book of the Month makes them accessible. I will leave more information for you on Book of the Month if you want to check them out down below in the description. And you can get your first book with Book of the Month for only $9.99 using the code JESSE. First up, we've got the king of booktube, of course, Jack Edwards. Boy has literally become one of my favorite content creators. He's brought a freshness to the platform that's been needed and I appreciate him and adore him. He's dope. Secondly, we've got Chanel. She hasn't been super active on YouTube lately, but I still adore her and I still wanted to read one of her favorites. Come back to us, Chanel! We need you! And finally, our calm, magical fairy queen that is Hannah from A Clockwork Reader. Her journal is in stores now. I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. Those are the booktubers I chose. I will leave links to them down below in the description. I went through some of their favorites lists from last year and selected a book from each of them and we're just gonna go in order here. So we're starting with Jack. Jack Attack. For Jack, I chose one that I'm already iffy about, which I I know it's just like not a good idea, like why would I choose a book that I'm iffy about? But the reason that I'm iffy about it is just because it has a lot of hype. That's the reason why I'm like, eh. but I figure I should just give it a go. It's not a book that I would like never ever read. It's just not a book that's priority for me in any sense of the word. That book is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. I've been dodging this one like it's eighth grade again, and I'm the target during the intense game of dodgeball during PE. Watch out, watch out, watch out. I just, I don't know if it's gonna be for me. And maybe I'm going in with preconceived feelings and I need to drop them off at the door and just like move on with my life. But this year I'm trying to like stretch my horizons and read things that I wouldn't normally read. So into the unknown we go. From what I understand, this follows a journalist who is breaking down the life of Evelyn Hugo. She's been hired to write a tell-all, and Evelyn Hugo is going to unleash the beast and tell it all. Time for reading. What's up? What's up? I read the book. Mm -hmm. Book girlies, you done did it again. You done got me hooked on a book. No, but you don't even understand. I'm obsessed. I need to know what Miss Taylor Jenkins reads injected into these words. You literally start consuming them and you can't stop, won't stop. Pay me to stop. I won't take the money. I'll just keep reading. Literally. What the heck? First up, we've got an addictive writing style that just like finds itself wrapped around your jugular, which sure, sounds uncomfortable, but it's not. It's like a nice scarf. One that Jake Gyllenhaal will not be getting his hands on. No, but really the way the author moves the story about is just 
just like very theatrical, a cinematic masterpiece, a full blown movie in my head. I genuinely felt like I blacked out while reading this book and not in the way where I was like, I blacked out, don't remember nothing. Trust me, I remember it all because it like full on embedded itself in my heart. Mm. I more so mean that I blacked out from the real world and this fictional story became my real world. Now for the story itself. The plot. Can somebody say iconic? I'll say it. Iconic. This is some Queen Bee plot right here. She's the homecoming queen and we're the ones staring in awe. The story unfolds in such a way where you're just like grasping for every bit of information that's coming out about Evelyn Hugo. It's like when you buy a bougie Starbucks drink and you're making sure that you get every last drip drip because you want to get your money's worth. This one feels like if you don't get every last sip, you'll die. <laughs> If you're new here, yes, I'm dramatic. Get over it already. As for characterization, Evelyn Hugo is an it girl. It's her world and we're all just living in it. Literally though, when you start reading this book, you realize how much of a side character you actually are because none of us can ever get on her main character level. It's unreachable. She's a character that like literally casts a spell on you and you can't undo it. But frankly, I don't want to undo it. <laughs> now let's not get too excited about ourselves over here because clearly Miss Hugo is not perfect. Just because she is the character, the moment, the everything, she's got her skeletons in her closet. And boy oh boy do they fall out all over the floor for all of us readers to see. Like clink clink, bones to the wood floor. I was also very satisfied with how things were brought together. Did it hurt when Evelyn Hugo dropped her bombs on me? Yes! If the impact of the things that happened in this book caused bruises, then I'd be one big and juicy bruise. Five out of five stars. Thank you, Jack. Speaking of Jack, let me compare my thoughts with Mr. Jack's thoughts. I know he has a more thorough review somewhere, but I can't find it anywhere. I can only find it in his favorite books of 2021 so far video. So this is like all I have to go off of, but his main points from this video, he says, first off, it's such a treat. Yes, delightful, a treat, which I I agree, I sucked it like a lollipop. Did those words really just leave my mouth? And I know that there is a better way to say that. I think I more so meant that it's like a Tootsie Pop because it's a very layered story and you're like sucking the outer layer trying to get to the middle layer. <laughs> Someone stop this man. <laughs> it's a treat. I agree, Jack, it's a treat. Next up, he loved the twist and he did not see it coming at all. Same best you same. Like still trying to recover over here, like full on deceased, falling to my death down here. And the last things that he said was that it was just so well done and so well executed. Yes, yes, yes. The word of this video is yes, so far at least. Yes. Thank you, Jack, for making me read this book and having it become one of my new favorites. Next, I'm moving on to a recommendation from Chanel from over at Chanel Time. And the book that I'm choosing based off her recommendation is Darius the Great is Not Okay. Are any of us okay? I know I'm not after reading Evelyn. And I don't know if this title is foreshadowing, but I might not be okay after reading this book either. This book was recommended in her 10 Great Books You Need to Read video. And this book is a contemporary story. And in it, we are following the character Darius, obviously. Darius is dealing with depression, a father who does not approve of any of his moves that he makes in life, and this like rather non-existent social life. Time for reading. Watch out, watch out. We're back. We're back. I thoroughly enjoy this one for many reasons. Let's go over those reasons. I'm related to the main character on several levels, specifically when it came to his social anxiety. Because how does one talk and interact with human beings? I'm still developing that skill. I'm a work in progress. W-I-P. Whip. And sometimes that work in progress comes with lots of embarrassment. A lot of late nights where I can't sleep and I'm staring at the ceiling, trying not to replay every embarrassing moment that's ever happened to me. Trying not to replay every embarrassing conversation I've ever had. The food descriptions in this book had me salivating. That was quite a switch and subject, but like, mmm, the food, the food, the food. Hungry thinking about it, to be honest. I thought I was like crying on the book at first because there were droplets like falling on the page. And then I realized it was coming from my mouth, just drooling all over the book. <laughs> What am I, a dog? Clearly. There's so many foods in here too that I haven't even tried before and like that is just uncalled for. That makes me feel very upset. I've got a rage. Ah! My house was shaking while I was reading this because of the rumblings coming from my stomach. A big thing that this book tackles is depression. And I feel like that topic specifically in this book like bleeds into the family dynamic, both in how the family discusses Darius's depression and also how they handle his depression as well. Darius's father also deals with depression so they kind of have a connection there, but at the same time, honestly, them both having depression kind of causes a bit of a rift in their relationship and that honestly was just really interesting to see because I feel like normally it'd be like a situation where the dad would have depression the son would have depression and the dad would help the son but like it doesn't really work that way dissecting that relationship and also just dissecting the depression aspect in the story was just like a really thought-provoking layer to kind of pull back let's compare my thoughts with Chanel first up she talks about how it's a book that she couldn't stop thinking about which I totally get because this is a book that is just so layered I didn't even talk about every 
everything that goes down in this book. Like there's so many other aspects to this book. On top of everything that I talked about, there's also like friendship dynamics and like having a hard time fitting in. And also like identity and like figuring out his sexuality and stuff like that. Like that is a big part of this book as well. So there's just so much going on here. So I can definitely see how this could be a book that you just like can't stop thinking about. She felt like the immigrant aspect was very respectful, which is very valid. She also talks about Darius being an outcast in both the US and Iran and how that was executed very well. I could definitely see that. I feel like that kind of tied into like his social anxiety and stuff, but also just like other aspects that like he couldn't even control, like people just judging him and being rude to him. So yes, that was done very well as well. Those were her thoughts and I definitely agreed with everything that she had to say. While I love this book, it was not a book that blew me away. As you can see, I've got both feet planted on the ground right now, except you can't see because my feet are out of the camera frame. That's because you have to pay extra to see my feet. I do not give food content for free. Sure, my videos are free, but my feet, they come at a price. It just overall didn't reach like five star level for me. I would overall give this book a four out of five stars. Mind you, I feel like this is a book where maybe it could take like a second or third read for me to be like fully blown away by it because I did really like it. And again, like I said, there's just so much going on here. So I almost wonder if I were to read it again or a third time even that I would grow an even greater respect for it each time that I read it because of how many layers are in this story. And I'm for sure going to be picking up the sequel, Darius the Great Deserves Better. Next up and the final choice, I am picking up a recommendation from Hannah. And that book is On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous. I actually started this book like a year ago as a buddy read with one of my friends named Tristan. I even have like a little marker at the front that says buddy read with Tristan, February 1st, 2021. But there's no end date because we only read like one little section of it at the beginning. That's where most of my buddy reads end up though in Nowhereville, which is why you won't catch me reading books with friends these days. From what I gather, this book is about a collection of letters written from a son to his mother who can't read. Throughout the story, we learn of the family's history and open different personal doors and walk through different meaningful paths that our main character has walked down. Time for reading. Watcha, watcha. I haven't read any reviews for this book yet, but I just know that all the book bros and book girlies are tearing it to pieces because of its writing style, and to that I say, get a new palette. This book is delicious. I love the poeticness that just oozes out of the prose. And the thing is, yes, it is written in a very extra way. Like over-the-top descriptions, striking metaphors, unconventional lines embedded throughout it. But to me, it's what breathe this life into the story. That was so dramatic. The reason this book to me is such a standout is because the author does so much work to make you just fully understand exactly how the characters feel. Like you just know the amount of work that he did in order to portray all these emotions and feelings. Yes, again, sometimes he does so in unconventional ways and sometimes in ways that like trip you up and make you take a second to like reread the line you just read and process what you read. Catch yourself reading and rereading some of the lines in this book as if they're equations and you've got to find the solution. No, I did not sign up for a math class, but I will gladly work through these equations. But the thing is, you will always come out of it with an understanding as to what emotion the character is going through when presented. You won't leave it with any questions or confusion. Things will be crystal clear. I feel like a big part of this book depicts the idea of identity. Both questioning yourself and exploring those questions. And then on the flip side, we see the part of our main character's identity as a child of an immigrant and how that affects his every move. In fact, some of my favorite parts from this book were exploring that identity of him being a child of an immigrant. He was only nine, but at all already mastered the dialect of damaged American fathers. Ma, to speak in our mother tongue is to speak only partially in Vietnamese, but entirely in war. I code switched. I took off our language and wore my English like a mask so that others would see my face and therefore yours. This is definitely a book where it's more so stable in character exploration. And while there's a plot present, it's kind of stripped of that to hone in on the character's roots and to see how they grew into who they are. I freaking loved this book. And it made me really happy to have a reason to get back to it after having set it aside after my failed buddy read. So I have Hannah to thank for me finishing this book. Which speaking of Hannah, let's go over her thoughts. First up, it's a book that she thinks about all the time. It's one that's like really made a mark on her. I can definitely see why she feels this way about it too, because it's a book where you just can't help but just like take a step back and contemplate your own thoughts, your own life, as every bit of the story is being consumed. You're questioning everything, and I love that about it. Her second point is that she loves the lyrical prose. Yes, you're preaching to the choir on that one. And her third point is that the character being the child of an immigrant really spoke to her, and it hit her on a personal level. I love that she felt so connected through that story thread, and I feel like a lot of people could find themselves in this book because of that. I definitely give this book a big ol' 5 out of 5 stars. I full-on McLoved it. Watcha! Watcha! 
That's the end of the video, guys. Those are three books recommended by three different booktubers and my thoughts on them. I really enjoyed doing this video. It was a lot of fun. I feel like I read such different books and each one was just like such a different journey and I really enjoyed the process. You guys should let me know down below in the comments if you have read any of these books and what your thoughts are on them. If you haven't though, let me know down below in the comments a book that you loved based off a booktuber's recommendation. I want to know down below in the comments. I will leave links to each booktuber's socials down below in the description so go and check them out. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you want to see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye yo! And the book in the iconic boo block. And the boo block. It's a great way to get ahead of the curd. It's a curd. <laughs> breathes life into the story. Why is it hard to say breathes? Whoa, let's just throw my book. <laughs>